lovely morning this morning. Blue skies, gentle breeze, sunshine. And the insects were out flying early as well. No, I'm not very good at identifying bees. I'm not sure whether this is a small sort of worker bumblebee or whether it's one of those solitary bees that looks like a bumblebee, like the hairy-footed flower bee. So if somebody could let me know, it would be great. A lot of insects need to warm up on these cold autumn mornings and here are two butterflies doing just that. They're red admirals and they like to sit and bask on a wall or a fence in full sunshine. And here they are, basking and feeding at the same time. I've put out a tray of rotten fruit for them and they love it. And this, I think, is a drone fly, a kind of large hoverfly. First thing in the morning is a good time to film these because they're not as fast as they are when they've warmed up later in the day. And look what I found just chilling out on my table. It's a European hornet. Hello Shemai, welcome back to my wild Welsh garden. Well the storm's gone over and it's a much quieter day today. Uh, I think it's the lull between two storms so I've come out in the garden to talk to you because I'm thinking that there probably won't be much more of an opportunity to do this. Unless of course we have uh, a heat wave in October which of course given our climate chaos is perfectly possible. So today I'm counting pollinators. I'm taking part in one of these uh, citizen science projects. It's run by POMS, the UK Pollinator Monitoring Scheme. And what I've been doing is called a FIT count, the flower insect timed count. And it's a lovely thing to do. What you do is you sit by uh, some flowers on a nice sunny warm afternoon. You mark out a 50 centimetre square and you count the number of pollinators that visit the flowers within that square over a 10 minute time period. So there's a number of different target flowers that they ask you to use uh, if you have them or have access to them. And I guess this is important because they can then compare uh, numbers uh, across different sites. But if you don't have the target flowers, then you can use any flower that's attracting insects um, in your garden or your park or wherever it is that you, you want to count them. At this time of year, um, the main target flowers are Buddleia and Ivy. Well, all my buddleias have gone over now. There's very few flowers left, but I do have some ivy, which I'll show you. It's, it's um, growing on the fence at the side of my summer house. So the weather's not ideal this afternoon. It's um, overcast and a bit cool and breezy. Um, but I'm thinking that this is probably the last opportunity that I'll have to do one of these fit counts. Um, 
The count finishes at the end of September, which is next weekend, and the weather forecast for next week is not good. There's a lot more rain on the way and a lot more uh, strong winds. So I'm going to give it a go and uh, see what happens. So this is the ivy in flower mixed up with a hawthorn tree. and a Virginia creeper. And this is an amazing piece of precision instrumentation which is necessary to do the count. It is in fact a 50 centimetre square made out of cardboard and wrapped around with uh, masking tape. So you put the square over your target flower, you count the number of flowers that there are within the square and you open up your app and start the count. This is not an insect, this is a spider. It's a garden spider and the garden is absolutely full of them. So I've finished my count and I counted 12 insects um, in 10 minutes and they say that the average for this time of year is 11 so pretty well spot on. There were two wasps, there was one hoverfly, three different sorts of flies, one honeybee and five small insects less than three millimetres. Last week I counted 31 now they do say to be careful not to count the same insect twice which of course is really difficult because if you see a bee at the beginning of 10 minutes and then another bee at the end of 10 minutes is that the same bee or is it a different one really difficult and then sometimes if there are a lot of pollinators like last week and they're zipping in and out like little fighter pilots it's so difficult to count them they do acknowledge um, that it is some if there are a lot of pollinators it is sometimes difficult and uh, just to do your best so I did my best but I have to say that this afternoon it was an awful lot easier it's so much easier when there are fewer pollinators but actually what we want is more pollinators so we want it to be really difficult to do these fit counts and the other thing I'm going to be doing today is counting butterflies. I'm also taking part in the garden butterfly monitoring scheme. Um, this is run by the same people that do the Great British Butterfly Count, but the methodology is slightly different. Um, with the Great British Butterfly Count, if I remember rightly, you count the butterflies that you see within a 15 minute um, time period. Well, with the Garden Butterfly Survey, um, you, you, there's no time limit on, um, on counting butterflies. It's just the butterflies that you see in your garden, but you 
can only record the maximum number that you see together in one place. So for example, if I come out in the morning and I see um, a, a Red Admiral butterfly, and then in the afternoon I see a Red Admiral butterfly, that's not two Red Admiral butterflies, that's only one. So I have to see two together in order to, to uh, record two. And today I have seen two together because there were two on the, um, the, the, the rotting fruit this morning and sunning themselves on my wall. And I've also seen two white butterflies together and one small tortoise shell all on its own. So I've decided to cut the grass, the lawn, the grassy, weedy, lawny area. Um, like I say, it's not a wildflower meadow. Um, I've tried to leave it um, to grow long, but I'm afraid it just doesn't work. It's only a very small area of grass and um, when people come and we want to sit in it, on it, um, if, if the grass is long, it, it really doesn't uh, function as, as a social space, which is what, what it was sort of left for, really. Um, so I'm, I, I really don't know quite the best way of managing this. Uh, I only cut it once a month, um, so often there's, uh, there's a lot of flowers. And there, there are some... As you can see, some uh, red clover and some fox and cubs flowering. And it's a shame, I feel awful um, to, to cut them off. But, you know, the pollinators are decreasing now. There's plenty of other flowers in the garden for them. Um, so, goodbye, lovely red clover. Goodbye, fox and cubs. I've cut it on the highest setting, so there's still plenty of uh, hiding places for creatures. It's not going to win any prizes for best manicured lawn, but I don't want it to. I just want to be able to walk across without getting soaking wet feet. And, uh, and now I can see where to put the, um, the fire pit if we decide we want to have a fire pit. And I can also see the bird baths. So I've cleaned those. They're all nice and clean. And I'm back in the summer house in the last uh, rays of the evening sun. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Um, it's been quite a good day. I had two things on my list. One was to count pollinators and the other was to cut the grass and I've managed to um, achieve both of them. So I'm feeling quite tired and uh, I'm just going to sit here and drink a glass of wine and watch the birds. Cheers.